If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. Calling the Commerce Session to order. It is 1 p.m. We have five bills before us this afternoon, um, beginning with House Bill 473 relative to the sale of gift certificates. Representative Hunt, who I visited with in his committee this morning. So, so the first question is, is he, is he passing your bill, Mr. Chairman? I'm sure he is. Uh, I'm sure first, he is. I, I, first, I had to uh, dispatch a, uh, a, a potential amendment and had to rule that it was not germane so that we would not you know, have any way to damage that bill. That great piece of legislation. Uh, highly because we want to protect that. Gold star. It's, it's very clean. It's very clean. We, we didn't need that non germane amendment that was going to be incredibly controversial. All right, thank you for that. Uh, won't help you here, though. <laughs> yes, it will. All right. <laughs> all, we are here. All my good friends. We are here for the good of the people, and we will do what is <laughs> right. Senator Lasky and I served together in House Judiciary. Representative Hunt, will you please that's present? That's going to get you nowhere. Will you please present House Bill 470? <laughs> okay. 470. Okay. Gifts are to you. For the record, I'm Representative John Hunt, Representative Cheshire 11, and Jim Fitzwilliam. I bring you a bill that uh, it had unfortunately died on the last day of the session last year um, because it had two, two different issues uh, in, in the bill. Um, but now they're both solved, so hopefully this is all, all taken care of. The primary purpose of the bill was that way back when, when we passed the initial uh, gift certificate statute, it was based on the fact that, that if you went into a store and you gave somebody $10 as, as a layaway, <coughs> you gave them actual cash that, um, and this is the old law, was that after five years, if you never came back again, then that business was required to turn that $10 over to the state of um, obviously, to track that and get a handle on that was going to be problematic. Um, so the way we, we, wanted to, we changed the statute is we created a de minimis amount, so that you know, what, how much money is okay. And, um, and that was $100, and to give you an idea, this, I think and Senator Rubens and I were working on this bill, so that shows you how long ago this was when we passed it, it was a good 20 years ago. So two fifty made sense to bring the, the dollar amount up. To what is what is a uh, reasonable amount of money that needs to be really contracted. The problem we had was that we had we had forgotten the other statute because it was it's written really it's in two sections of the law. One is the abandoned property section, um, and then the other is the uh, protection act statute. So uh, we did it in one, not the other, and uh, so that that is addressed in this bill. And then the only other issue we had, which was, it wasn't really a Senate issue, it was a House, it was a problem I was having inside my, my side of the aisle, uh, <laughs> the wall, um, was the issue of the definition of gift certificate, where you see line 10. And um, everybody said, boy, that language is pretty archaic, it needs to be you know, modernized to the way we do gift certificates today. And we kept playing around with the language and how to do it, and, and finally, I said, well, if the problem is the word written, because nothing's written anymore, <laughs> done electronically, just, just uh, the minimus, just take the word out, and that will solve everything. So that's how you have that. All right. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chair. How are you today? Excellent. Nice to see you, sir. And great to see you as well. Um, I probably should not throw a stick in the wheels of your finely tuned bicycle, and I'm trying not to do so. But if you look down at line 15, um, where it talks specifically about credits issued for store merchandise, what about all the gift certificates that say the hospitality industry and all the other places where it might not be merchandise, but it might be making a payment towards a credit for some service or good at a future date? Okay. So we, we clearly say that for, because a lot of the hospitality, you probably should start out saying, you have a potential conflict because you give out these certificates. I apologize, Mr. Chair. <laughs> I must have meant that I'm, based upon our 
stupid ethics laws that no one seems to want to fix at this point. I feel compelled to say I may or may not have a conflict, um, but I will get participating anyway. So, now I say, so we started out is this is, has to have actual value. Okay. In other words, you can't, if, that if you, as a restaurant, say, if people come in and say, uh, you know, would you make a donation to the, to the chamber and, you know, and you issue a little gift certificate coupon, but you did not receive any monetary value for that. Um, if you have to have underlying money, monetary value involved in the transaction. If I can follow up. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and for the record, our ethics laws are not stupid. I'm just frustrated that we can't fix the ones that are that are too the overly excessive today. That being said, um, I, I appreciate this stuff at like the chamber, where where all of us as business owners throw money at those types of charities and get nothing in return. But many of us also sell gift certificates. Yeah. Say like by Christmas season, yes. you know it's a big part of everyone's business to sell gift cards and and gift certificates. That we are receiving money for with the promise to provide some sort of a good or service at a later date. Yes. So when I specifically read this, it talks specifically about store merchandise credit. Correct. And mine's not store merchandise. It is a, a uh, it is, is a credit. In other words, if let's say let's take that store merchandise credit. Let me take that. Let's say um, you are a clothing store and someone comes in and pays cash for Again, a, for a pair of pants. $100. In this case, it's, it's, it's $5. It's $5, okay? If they pay that $5 cash and then they take it home and they say, whoops, it doesn't pay, and they bring it back, okay, then you theoretically, you, your returns policy should would give them their money back. Unless you had written on the sale, final sale, and that you made clear that there was non, a non return blight. But if you take it back and you now issue that merchant a $5 credit, okay, because they paid you the $5, you actually did receive the $5. Even though there was some merchandise, even though there was some transactions in between, you should have sitting on your books that you, that if this customer comes back, you have a $5 credit on your books. Yes, you must honor that for the rest of your business life. Well, well, that's good. Um, I appreciate that and I, I, like, I agree with everything you're saying. My question is more if someone doesn't buy anything and return it, that if someone just walks in the door and says, I want a gift card or that's, I want some sort of a credit. That's particularly exempted from this section. It's particularly it's specifically exempted from the section. So this section is solely about having bought something and returned it. Correct. My apologies, I wasn't aware of that. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We're here to inform us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm getting a little confused. Yes. You mentioned layaway, and then was, I thought this was different from a layaway. A gift certificate is different from a layaway. We don't, we don't care what it's called. Whether it's a layaway, whether it's a gift certificate, or whatever you want to call it, whether it's a it's a, a card, it's a, a card that you load up with points. Okay, okay. but um, I, I guess why I'm confused is because you just told Senator Sanborn that it it could not be a gift certificate in the sense that it's redeemable for whatever. You have to purchase something first. Or you've given them cash. So if if I could Clarify, Mr. Chair, from the yeah. Senator and the House Rep. Um, the fine Senator to my right um, enlightened me um, to, to remember that it's from line 14 to 22 is in a different section of law that is specifically for um, custody and SD of un unclaimed and abandoned property. So line 1 through 14 has to do with the type of gift cards I would sell, and line 14 through 22 has specifically with return property for credit and line 11 indicates okay so so when no, i use that thing i use a layaway which is maybe it's a bad example okay but it's just one of many examples the key element is as long as the merchant the vendor the business actually receive monetary value receive money but if they just give it away 
In other words, I'm sure that uh, if this restaurant, I would go in to the chamber and say, we're doing an auction, would you want to give us a $100 gift certificate? Uh, and he, they write, just write that gift certificate out that had, didn't get paid for it. Right? They didn't, I didn't give them money for it. There was no monetary money paid for it. They just wrote it out of the generosity of their heart. Right. Then this, this statute doesn't affect it. But may, thought, may, yeah. following that train of the person that buys that gift certificate at an auction or <coughs> They in turn have paid cap for it or mm -hmm. have paid money. No, so they it can't. It's not. They, they I mean, it's redeemable, but not. They theoretically would have tried to get a tax donation, but they can't get a tax donation because you, if you receive a value, you can't get a tax donation. It's not deductible. So, but yes, it is true that that is a sort of a nuance, but no, they, they, that's not. Deductible. So my nuance isn't any good. Thank you. Are there other questions? That was a good trial. Other questions for the representative? All right. Thank you, Representative Hunt. Appreciate it. <coughs> Next up, uh, uh, well, um, Senator Regina Birdsell supports, does not wish to speak. Um, Curtis Berry from New Hampshire Retail supports, does not wish to speak. Um, Daryl Perry from Liberty Lobby supports and would like to speak. Mr. Perry. Thank you. I will be incredibly brief. For the record, Daryl Perry, CEO of Liberty Lobby LLC. And the main thing to notice here is just that it's increasing the dollar amount of, or rather the face value of the gift certificate that can be sold with an expiration date. Uh, I tried doing some research on the particular statute to find out exactly when the $100 was added, and it was either in the 1960s or the 1980s. The research that I was able to do online was not the greatest. Thank you, uh, you know, whoever runs the uh, General Report website for not making things easy. Uh, but you know, in either case, once you calculate for inflation, you're looking at somewhere around $250 uh, based on when I believe the $100 actually got added to statute. So this is just you know, keeping up with inflation, if you will. And also, it, as Representative Hunt mentions, strikes the word written to allow for a gift card or some sort of you know, input on a computer to where, yep, we've got it in our computer system instead of actually having to write out a physical uh, gift certificate. So basically, it's getting the statutes into the 21st century. Uh, good bill. I don't see it as being controversial at all. And I'll answer any questions. Sure. Thank you for the research and the testimony. Henry Venue supports him. Would like to speak. Mr. Venue, welcome. Thank you, uh, Chairman Innes and uh, members of the committee. For the record, my name is Henry Bayou, and I'm here on behalf of the New Hampshire Lodging and Restaurant Association. And we were the ones that uh, approached Representative Hunt uh, and all uh, to bring this bill forward. Um, the bill, as Representative Hunt is explaining, has two parts. One part deals with prohibited acts under consumer protection, and the other section deals with the abandoned property. And they're connected in this way. Right now, the law says that it is a prohibited act to sell a gift certificate um, with an expiration date. Uh, gift certificate is less than $100. Gift certificates that are greater than $100 are considered abandoned property if they're not redeemed within five years of the purchase. And so what the merchant has to do at that point is the merchant is supposed to have records that indicate who purchased the gift certificate. You're supposed to try to find the person. If you can't find the person, then you remit that information over to the state, uh, the Abandoned Property Division, and then the state, uh, you see every year, once a year, the union leader that's this thick and it has, this is all abandoned property. Well, that's how this would end up. It would end up in there um, so that the person who purchased the gift certificate of $100 or more. You can get that value if they haven't uh, 
use the gift certificate to buy a room. So that's how they're linked. That's how these two sections are linked. So if we're changing it in one section, we have to change it in the other section. So all we're doing is we're increasing the threshold at which something becomes abandoned property and sets off this whole complicated process for the merchant to try to find uh, the recipient, uh, uh, the purchaser of the gift certificate, which usually different than the person that actually uses the gift certificate because it's a gift. So, um, anyways, um, so we strongly support this. Um, it's good for the merchant, but it's also good for the consumer um, because now, uh, if you look at this way, um, a gift certificate is up to $200, uh, cannot expire. Uh, and so, if you purchase one, um, you can redeem it. Um, at any point. Um, so I think it's good for both the merchant, you know, it's a win-win for both. Um, this bill was introduced last year, passed the Senate last year, went to the House. There was a mistake at the very end uh, with one of the dates, so we ended up just killing the bill, reintroducing it this year. Um, but that is basically the purpose of the bill, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions from Mr. Baker? Thank you for your testimony. Is there anyone else who would like to speak with respect to House Bill 473? Maybe get to sign up. We'll close the hearing on House Bill 473. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.